Welcome to your first vocabulary video for science. So because it's your first one, I wanted to just kind of clarify a few things and give you a little general information first. Um, so the first thing being is this is going to be for 1.1 vocabulary and is going to be uh, for a science and technology unit. And so you'll always see something like that in all of our videos. Uh, the next thing as well is so when we proceed, uh, it'll be set up, the slides will be set up just like how your vocabulary is, in which you have those blank squares and you're responsible for filling in the information. We do ask that unless I specify in the video, which I sometimes will, uh, make sure that you are completing all of that information. And then the other pieces with your pictures, uh, I ask that they are in color. Now, uh, with your pictures, I'm not grading you on, is it the most, you know, is it a very impressive drawing? I need to just be able to identify kind of what it is and how it rela uh, relates back to the word. Ultimately, your vocabulary is for you. So it needs to mean something to you. Having said that, I need to be able to determine that it can. So don't worry if you're not a great drawer. I'm not, okay? Um, that's not what I'm looking at when I'm grading them. So, and then the other final thing is with the written piece, make sure it is legible. More importantly, you must be able to read it. Um, if it's something that looks like it'll be difficult to read, I will ask for you to read it to me um, just to make sure, because as I said, the vocabulary was for you. And if you are unable to read it, then it serves no purpose. And yes, if you cannot read it, you will have to redo it. So if you're gonna do something, do it right the first time. Let's begin. All right, so our first word is just science. What is science? And now this makes sense. We haven't really had a science class before, and so we need to just in general lay the ground, ground rules as to what science is. And a general definition is science is a way of learning about the natural world. It's what we do when you're trying to discover something or learn more about something. Uh, and we'll have an example, and a number of these will actually have Jane Goodall because your book is talking about that as well. Uh, Jane Goodall was a famous scientist who studied chimpanzee behavior, uh, and um, this le we learned a lot about him because of her. So, uh, so Jane Goodall uses science to learn about the behavior of chimpanzees in the wild. So she went out, she studied and observed them and all those things, and we'll talk about all those pieces of science here in just a second. And then, of course, for the picture here, we have Jane Goodall interacting with a young chimp. Um, again, your drawing doesn't need to be exactly like this, okay? Um, but just somehow showing maybe an interaction or something like that. Uh, and yes, stick figures are totally okay. All right, moving on to our next word. Uh, and so we're going to have observing, all right? So... Observing is using one or more of your senses to gather information. So you are using your senses, you're looking at things, and you're gathering that information, you're collecting it, you're writing it down. So uh, by observing chimpanzees, Jane Goodall learned, that, uh, learned what they eat, what sounds they make, and what games they play. All right, so she's able to determine a lot of things by looking at them. She was able to figure it out. Uh, just like you can watch something and learn about something and get information about it. Um, so for our picture, we have Jane Goodall again over here. And you can see she's writing down in a notebook. And she is observing what these chimpanzees are doing. And she's collecting that information. And so she's writing down those observations. And that's really important. And as we get more into the steps of science, we'll talk about how recording your observations is really important. I should also mention, before I forget, feel free to pause the video at any time to make sure you get the information down, right? That's part of the reason it's nice it's in a video. You can pause it, get all the information, and then move on to the next word. Um, so if you haven't done that, make sure you know you can do that. All right, the next one is going to be quantitative observations. So the definition of quantitative observations is it deals with numbers or amounts. Uh, and so an example could be, I have 11 new emails, right? It, it has the number right here. And that's why we just have a whole bunch of numbers over here for our image. Quantitative is numbers. The idea, or rather the way that I have you guys kind of remember this, or a good way to remember this, is we have right here, 
this part right here is very close to the word quantity. And that's kind of where the quantitative is coming from, a quantity of something. You have a quantity, you have a certain number of something. Um, you know, you may actually see this sometimes if you maybe are ordering something online. It'll ask uh, for how many you want and it'll ask for the quantity. And so that's where that's coming from. Quantity is always a number. All right, and next we have our qualitative observation. So different word. So it's going to be deals with descriptions that cannot be expressed in numbers. We just talked about the type of observation that deals with numbers. Now we're talking about the observation that does everything but numbers. So if it doesn't have numbers, it's qualitative. Okay. So our example would be the bike is blue. Okay, so in this case, we're talking about the color of the bike. And in this case, we have a blue bike over here. All right, we have nothing with numbers. So we could say a whole bunch of things about this bike that don't have numbers. Okay, the tires are black or, you know, talk about its size. The bike looks small or anything like that would be a qualitative observation. You're identifying the qualities, right? So if we do that kind of looking at the beginning, we look at the qualities of the object all right you could say you talk about if it's smooth or is it rough or any of those types of things are qualitative observations moving right along we have inferring okay and sometimes you hear me say inferences or just infer all are really the same type of word just changing the tense depending on how we're looking at it so making an inference an interpretation, uh, making an inference. So an interpretation based on observations and prior knowledge. It's not the same as a prediction, which we'll talk about. So Jane reasoned that there was water in the tree because the chimp pulled out wet leaves. So she was able to kind of infer that because the leaves were wet, there was water on them. And so the chimp was then getting water from those leaves. And she was using some past information that she had. Uh, and then we have this picture of a chimp kind of doing that. They're kind of taking those leaves and they're kind of eating the sides of them. And they're kind of getting some of that water off the wet leaves. All right, now we're moving on to predicting, right? I said inferring and predicting were different. They're very similar, but they're different. The key thing about a prediction is, well, so if we look at the definition, it says making a statement or claim about what will happen in the future okay future that's the really important piece uh, the big difference between the two things a prediction is always going to be something that happens in the future but it's still based on past experience or evidence so when jane saw a chimp with his or her hair on end she was able to predict there was danger okay the idea being is she was looking at a future event something that hasn't happened yet, but might. If we think back to that inferring example that you have completed, she was looking at something that has happened and looking at why the chimp did do that, something they did in the past. Um, and so predicting is all about the future. If it's not about a future-based thing, then it's inferring. All right, moving on to our next word, we have classifying. So classifying is grouping together of items that are alike in some way. So Jane was able to group together all the information of the chimp's behaviors. So classifying, you can kind of think of it as just organizing, right? If you just like your binders are organized in a specific, well, you know, maybe by class, right? You know, they're organized in a specific way. They could be color coded all those things, you can have a lot of ways that you can organize a material. And that's the same thing when we're talking about classifying. And so what here, okay, I have all these shapes. Now these are not organized by color, right? Because there's a bunch of different colors all over the place, right? These all are different colors, but they are organized by shape. Okay, and so for whatever reason, when I'm looking at these different shapes, I decided I wanted to classify them by shape. And that was what was important to me. I could have done it by color, Okay, that could have been another way I organized it, but maybe the shape was more important. And so you can change how you classify something depending on how you want it to be used. Um, and so we'll practice classifying items uh, here in class as well. 
Okay, so now we're on to evaluating. So evaluating, or to evaluate, involves comparing observations and data to reach a conclusion about them. So Jane compared all of Jomeo's behaviors. Uh, Jomeo is the name of one of the chimps that she studied. Uh, behaviors with those of other chimps that uh, to reach a conclusion. And then we have a guy here with a magnifying glass evaluating something. A very generic type of drawing for evaluating here. So evaluating really is just looking at information and figuring out what it means, right? Um, when you guys have a test or a quiz in our class, that is a form of evaluation. I'm evaluating you guys. Uh, I'm looking at your scores and then I can, I'm kind of comparing them with others and seeing and are we understanding the information or are we all not understanding the information, all of those things. And so that's an example of evaluating as well as tests and quizzes and things like that. Um, Okay, we're almost done. We got two more left. And so now we're on making models. All right, so making models, uh, create, uh, what that, that is, is we're creating representations of complex objects or processes to help explain difficult things. So some examples of models are maps, math equations, and computer programs. You're most experienced with like maps or physical models, right? Like a model airplane, a model train, a model car, any of those types of things. Essentially, okay, it's a model if it represents something. We make models because things can be really hard to understand if we don't have a different visual representation. So a really good example is the idea of the map, right? where you are currently sitting you can't see the whole world you can see pretty much the inside of the classroom maybe a little bit outside the window but you can't see the entire world you certainly can't see greenland or russia or anything like that the map is really helpful because it allows us to see the whole world without having to go all the way into outer space right uh, and there's a lot of things like that are really helpful and we'll spend a lot of time looking at models because they're very common in science because some of the things that we have are really hard to see okay now um, it's important to know that no model is perfect there may be errors in some of those models and that makes sense too if a model was perfect it would cease being a model and it would be the actual thing so uh, just kind of keep that in mind as well. All right, so finally we are on to the last word, and that's scientific inquiry. And so scientific inquiry is a lot of just how do we do science, right? And that's one of the big ideas, and we'll spend a lot more time looking at what scientific inquiry is and all the pieces that are part of it, and we'll start practicing that. So scientific inquiry refers to the diverse ways in which scientists study the natural worlds and propose explanations based on the evidence they gather. So an example could be geologists use observations of rock layers to draw inferences about how the earth has changed over time. So you might notice about this image over here, it doesn't look much like how you may think the globe looks like now, right? If you have spent any time looking at it, it doesn't look like this, right? That's because Okay, the, through scientific inquiry, we're able to kind of represent that these land masses actually are moving. Okay, the one we're on right now is moving very, very slowly. Okay, it's not going to be any noticeable change in your lifetime or really many lifetimes at all. Uh, but it is kind of slowly moving and we're able to kind of use that. So geologists are able to use some of these observations and this information to look about how it, the earth has changed over time right you may have heard of you know way back during the age of the dinosaurs the idea of you know pangea and things like that uh, and it was just one giant landmass, and now they've all kind of separated and all that so over a lot of time the earth can change a great deal on how it looks and i'm not going to get into all the details of how that is um, but it's a good example of how we could use scientific inquiry and that's the end of your first vocabulary video. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, make sure you have all that information recorded and it's legible, all those good things. Make sure you've color added. And then we're going to keep on going practicing these words and moving on to the other ones.